skaters, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. I am Coach Julia, and today I am going to be going through some more of your questions. So you guys are always leaving me these amazing comments on my videos, and today I'm going to go through a couple of those comments and give you some answers just off the top of my head. So let's get to the first one. All right, so this is from Slippery Hard and Cold. Okay, that's quite a great name for a figure skating persona. Slippery Hard and Cold, I love it. Okay, they're saying there seemed to be a discussion between coaches recently on whether the primary leverage for the turns should be shoulders against hips or whether the rotation should be more with the legs. Do you have any comments on this? Wow, that's a great question. So they're asking sort of where the uh, leverage, where the rotation should be happening in a turn, like a three turn. Mostly it's gonna happen with the upper body. Your foot is, of course, needs to be involved. You have to have the correct foot action for a turn to happen. So if you're working on a three turn, you have to have that rise and fall through the foot. If it's a forward turn, you have to have the foot control to lift your heel up rise up towards the front of the skate and then go back down. If it's a backward turn, you have to be able to lift that toe up and go to the heel and then go back down. So there is foot action, but the rotation, the torque for the turn happens in the upper body, okay? Uh, if I think about like a loop uh, turn, not the loop jump, but a loop turn, you have to have so much force happening in the upper body to make it happen uh, that the foot action while it's important, it's almost incidental to what is happening with the upper body. So my response is you definitely have more leverage in the shoulders and hips, well, sh shoulders against hips versus the legs on a turn. Great question. Let's move on to the next one. So this question is from Taylor Hody, H-O-E-D-Y. I think I, I hope I got that right. They are saying, do you have any tips for bringing your free leg closer to your skating leg? I can do decent one-ish, decent-ish one foot spins, but my free leg always feels like it's far away. Oh my goodness, I understand that problem. When you're in your spin and you're, I've seen this so many times with students where they're in a, in a spin and they're, they're going, but their legs are just so far apart on that one foot spin. So I really am gonna encourage you to do some off ice exercising, improving the strength of your adductors. So the adductors are the muscles on the inside of your legs that squeeze, okay? You wanna build up strength in those muscles so that when you have the centrifugal force of the spin pulling everything out, you have the strength within your own body to counter that centrifugal force and pull everything back together. So you can hit the gym and do some adductor uh, exercises. There's a lot of things you can probably find on YouTube using exercise bands. If you wanna work on strengthening your adductors so you can squeeze those legs together while you're spinning. Oh, okay, this one, I have no idea how to pronounce your name. I'm so sorry. Um, but they're asking, what is the name of the song that plays all the time behind the videos? So that, you can see I'm smiling just thinking about the answer. That is my fiance. He writes music and he writes little pieces of music for me for my videos all the time. And so those pieces of music don't have names. They're things that were made for me. So I'm glad you like them. Okay, figure skater exclamation mark says, hey Julia, do you have any tips on how I can stay on my axis? When doing spins and jumps, I find myself severely off my axis from all the rotation and need some help. Okay, well, that's a tough one. The axis is so important for spins and jumps and if you don't have a good sense of where that axis is, you're in trouble. So especially for the spins, I recommend you practice all of your spin positions outside of the spin. So if you're working on a one foot spin, scratch spin, backward scratch spin, you know, you wanna practice those down the ice and on a circle, really focusing on keeping everything in alignment. That will help your muscles memorize how it should feel, where everything should be lined up at. And then when you go to do it in the spin, it's a little bit easier. You can do the same thing with a camel or a sit or an attitude or stork spin or pin. I mean, almost any spin position you can practice 
gliding. There's a few exceptions, things like uh, laybacks, you don't want to try while you're gliding. Um, I have tried Beelman's while gliding. Um, not, I've never tried a hair cutter gliding though. I try uh, hair cutters, laybacks, things where I'm leaning backwards. I'll do those over by the wall. So I'll have the support of the wall and the security of the wall to help me balance. But just about any other spin that I've practiced, I've been able to do gliding down the ice. So you want to hit your position, say if it's an attitude, get into that attitude position, glide down the ice and really focus on where your axis is. So you can memorize that, so your muscles absorb that information and learn. So when you go do that spin rotating, your muscles already know what it's supposed to be like. You're just trying to get back to that sensation that they already know. You can do similar things with jumps. Um, you can practice a lot of your jumps without rotating. You can practice uh, the entry and exit of a flip and just with a little hop in between instead of a spin. You can do that with a loop where you're practicing just hopping through it and thinking about where the axis is. So my recommendation, I know it's a long answer, is to practice all those spin and jump positions without the rotation so that you can mem your muscles can really absorb that information for when you rotate. I hope that's helpful. Okay, this one is from La Holmes, uh, La Holmes 966. I would love a video on how to fall in a way that minimizes injury. Oh, that's a big one. As a 55 year old who just started skating, congratulations after almost 40 years. Oh my gosh, I'm becoming more and more impressed. You took 40 years off and now you're restarting at 55. Congratulations, that's amazing. Um, so I'm discovering I just don't bounce like I used to. Seems like the older we get, the harder we fall. And I know there are beginners out there older than me, true. Now after a couple of falls, I would have bounced back from in my earlier years, I can't move for days and is almost paralyzing me with fear. What measures can I take to prevent serious injury to an aging body? I don't need to be able to do fancy jumps and spins but I'd give anything to be able to do a turn on one foot without con with confidence and not fear. Oh my goodness. Yeah, falling and fear of falling is one of the biggest uh, hurdles I've actually seen from people in these responses. Um, I'm gonna tell you, A, I'm so impressed that you've come back after 40 years off, congratulations. Get some injury protection gear and I can link some things down below. There are hip and butt pads that are made for skaters. They're like shorts you can put on that have pads all over the important areas. They've got tailbone, hips. Um, you can also get elbow pads, uh, a he some sort of head protection gear. Um, I have a lot of students who wear something called a halo. It's like a band that goes around your head. They're fluffy, they're covered in like fur, so they look stylish but it's actually all of the impact protection of wearing a helmet. We don't ever fall on the top of our head, so we don't need that the way maybe a cyclist or someone who's doing skateboarding stunts where they're flipping around is gonna need top of the head protection. What we need in skating is around the sides where we might fall and hit our head, and the halo is gonna do that, so I can link that below. You also want to get you know some knee pads maybe some wrist protection so invest in some protection okay that's gonna be my main encouragement because then even if you fall you might get a bit jostled you're not gonna have those hard impact injuries that you might without any protection gear this one is from silver B I really want to try ice skating but I've been told that I can't do really well on ice because I'm 18 and it's too late for me to learn. Oh my goodness, get yourself out there on the ice and give it a try. That's my answer. 18 is not too late to learn how to skate. I have so many students who have started way later than that and they're doing great things. They're out doing competitions and ice shows. No, you're not gonna be going to the Olympics starting at 18, but there's so much you can still do with this sport. You have years and years and years ahead of you of fun and challenges out on the ice. So don't let someone telling you 18 is too old to stop you. They don't know what they're talking about, okay? I have so many adult skaters who are loving being out there on the ice. And so just go for it, all right? Silver B, get out there on the ice. Okay, 
They say, how do you keep from dizzy during or after a spin? Dizzy face. Okay, this is a great question. So many people ask me this. So inside your ears are these little tiny hairs and there's liquid or fluid that brushes across those hairs. And there's certain sensations that your brain thinks are very dangerous. And so they will cause you to be dizzy. Your brain is going, oh my goodness, I think you might be falling. Or I, th I think that uh, you're in a disorienting situation. And it t tells you to be dizzy. And sometimes those signals are correct. And sometimes those signals are figure skating. And so if you keep working through your spins, your brain eventually will learn to recognize what a spin feels like, and it's not gonna send you that Disney si di uh, dizzy signal as much. Now, if you back off and you don't practice for a while, your brain's gonna quickly forget what a spin feels like, and you're gonna have to retrain your brain. This is what a spin feels like, I'm not dying and then it has to relearn not to tell you to be dizzy. So you can learn with time not to get dizzy with spins, but it takes consistent practicing those spins and your brain learning. Just like your muscles learn to skate, your brain has to learn that spins are okay. Okay, now this name I can pronounce, Hannah Stokes. All right, she says, I've been skating for a little less than two years. Welcome to the sport. I've I'm starting to work on more jumps like the flip and lutz as well, but I'm and I'm finally getting my loop, but I consistently struggle with not getting enough height. My coach always tells me to bend, 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 but it seems like when I bend too much, my pick slides out. Okay, well, yes, bending your knees is important for getting for anything in skating, but especially for getting height in jumps, but that's not the whole factor in getting height. Besides bending your knees, you need to have a good trajectory up. So I'm gonna recommend you do some off ice exercising. Put your knee, feet parallel, bend down, jump as high as you can, and work on getting height off the ice. You're gonna just get your feet really square, shoulders, hips, everything square, put your hands behind you, jump straight up. Think about taking your midsection, your torso, through your rib cage and lifting with every jump, right? So it's like your upper half is lifting as well as your lower half is jumping. You wanna jump all the way through your tiptoes, all right, so that even your the tips of your toes are helping you get height. That will apply to skating as well. We wanna jump all the way through your toes. So do some off ice things, uh, you know, just in your tennis shoes, practicing lifting your torso as you jump. And then you can apply that to your jumps on the ice as well. So it's not just bending a lot that's gonna send the pressure down into the ice. You wanna then lift and uh, get that upper body to help you with lifting to help assist your legs, all right? So your upper body can actually kind of help assist the job your legs are doing in jumping. All right, skaters, I hope you enjoyed this video where I responded to your comments. If you did and you want to be part of a video like this, I encourage you to go to my homepage and hit the join button. Next month, I'm gonna be doing another video like this. I'm gonna be looking for all of those people who are members of my channel and responding to your comments with videos like this and maybe some videos out on the ice. So if you wanna be involved in a video like this, make sure you hit that join button. If you enjoyed this, please do give us that thumbs up. And as always, I look forward to reading all your comments in this section down below. If you haven't done so yet, then hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell down in the corner so you can see all my videos when they come out. Happy skating, and I'll see you next time.